Okay, for that introduction, and uh, uh, I hope everybody's doing great today. It's good to get around and uh, see everybody again, and uh, um, it's great to be with you today. Um, you guys always put on a great uh, <coughs> program, and uh, the music was fabulous, and Marilyn, uh, everything's been great. Well, since the last election, Karen and I have been real busy. <laughs> we, uh, I started a small business, and Karen and I had our daughter, Sarah, in September, on the 2nd of September. She's now 11 weeks old on Wednesday, so she's, uh, she's doing great, and Sarah is uh, the love of our lives and doing great and, and healthy. And uh, I'm sorry Karen couldn't be here today. She had a uh, meeting at 1 o'clock in Dublin and didn't want to rush in and out, so, uh, but uh, everybody's doing well. Uh, in our family. Unfortunately, in Washington, um, things aren't going well. Things are really off track. You know, this country really got in trouble when people borrowed money they couldn't afford to pay back, and uh, they spent money on things they couldn't afford. And unfortunately, the answer in Washington is to spend money on things they can't afford and borrow money that we can't afford to pay back. And um, we've got to really, I think, stop that madness. It's, uh, I mean, are you concerned about what's going on in Washington? Sure. Do you worry that our national debt is now has been increased by a trillion dollars? Do you worry that Congress spent over a million dollars a minute in the first six months of this year? Do you worry that they spent seven hundred billion dollars on a stimulus bill that hasn't created any jobs? Um, and they just bought. Um, a car company in General Motors, and now they want a board in Washington to take over our health care and decide, you know, what our health care plans look like, and they want government control of our of our health care, and I think that is a, a huge problem. At the same time, they cut uh, $500 billion out of Medicare to cut Medicare managed care, Medicare Advantage, that 70% of senior citizens like. And Medicare Advantage actually does a good job on things like prevention, where the government does a terrible job. Um, you know, we should be very concerned, and we've got to be. Um, that's, why, that's what got me concerned about what's going on in Washington, and, and I decided to do something to fix it. I'm going to run for Congress from the 15th District of Ohio. And uh, obviously, last time we've kind of been there and done that, but I think this next year things are going to be very different. Uh, you saw what happened in Virginia, you saw what happened in New Jersey. Independents are fed up like we are of the overspending, of the growth in government. They want to take back this country while we still can, while we still can afford to take back this country because, you know, the debt is really getting, uh, getting to be a huge burden. Um, they want folks in Washington that will work to get things done, work for all of us. And, you know, when I was in the state senate, I didn't trade my principles at the door. I was a conservative, a fiscal conservative, and, and worked to make sure that we balanced our budgets. But I worked with Democrats to try to get things done and find solutions. And I think the two parties do need to work together. And even on things like health care, there's a lot more common ground than people think. Uh, I think we all, well, most Americans, other than Tri Waters and Union, can agree that defensive medicine is a problem. And we've got to pass comprehensive court reform. Uh, I think everybody can agree that we've got to figure out how to make price transparency and quality transparency in our health care system a reality. That will make things like health savings accounts work better, uh, which is one of the few customer or consumer driven parts of health care. One of the big problems in health care, in my opinion, is there's not enough consumer behavior, real consumer behavior. It's always somebody else's money. It's always somebody else's problem. And um, that's why I think things like medical savings accounts and health savings accounts can be a part of the solution. Uh, but we need to get price transparency to make them work better. And we do need more competition. We need to let insurance companies sell across state lines. Um, we need to allow folks that are up to age 25 or 30 on their parents' health plan at a price. They need to be able to pay for the privilege to get into that group. We need to let small businesses band together and get the buying power of big business so that they can go out and get more affordable, dependable coverage. Yay. You know, when Kathy goes out to her um, insurance broker every year to renew her insurance, I bet it's what, 15% a year if, if you don't shop around and, and, it's, uh, 
and you need the buying power to be able to, to I don't want to help us, but I have yeah. been known that this is a 55% increase. Mm. Uh, I'm not kidding. Yeah. I just wanted to add this. You're right. Well, not. So there are real Republican solutions out there. Uh, we need to Ameri make America more competitive again against other countries in the world. And I think I'm the right person to go to Congress and make this happen. I share the values of the people of the 15th District, hard work, honesty, thrift, perseverance, and working together to get things done. Most importantly, the elections of 2009 taught us Americans want checks and balances in their government. This, you know, overwhelming Democrat majority that's going way off to the left, um, they want to stop it. And they want checks and balances to make sure that we're doing things that make sense. Um, and there are extremes uh, in government right now. You've seen the extreme spending, you've seen the extreme expansion in government, and unfortunately, um, our Congresswoman is part of the extremes in government, and, this, and we've got to get rid of her. So, uh, you know, as a result of her actions and, and the Congress out there, my daughter Sarah, when she was born 11 weeks ago, already owed $34,000 as her share of the national debt. $34,000. And the Congressional Budget Office says in the next five years, that's going to double if we don't stop it. And we've got to put our foot down. Um, I can't afford it. We can't afford it. My daughter can't afford it. Your kids and grandkids can't afford it. Uh, and we've got to actually start paying down the national debt. And that means we need real jobs and economic growth. And meanwhile, this Congress hadn't done anything about jobs. The number one issue in this country is the economy. The number two issue is unemployment. Uh, you put them together, they're like 60% of the people think that that jobs cluster of issues is the most important issue. And this Congress has done nothing to help America grow. And we will face a future of debt and despair if we go down the road they're going down. And I want this country to have a future of growth and prosperity instead. And that's why We've got to focus on getting Washington to understand that getting me to Washington will do that. Uh, in fact, our congresswoman really doesn't understand. Recently, the Columbus Dispatch said that uh, uh, in a, an editorial that uh, she was not helpful when a business was trying to add over a thousand jobs here in Central Ohio. That her efforts actually hindered the ability of that company to come here and add those jobs. Uh, but together, we can make sure that she gets the message on November 2nd of next year. So uh, I'm going to need your help um, because we can get there together. Um, now, this election will probably be in some ways similar to the last election. The last election got ugly. Anybody that owns a TV knows that I used to be a bank lobbyist because they spent $4 million to say that. And so did Lord Peter, by the way. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with it. I helped. Uh, company Bank One, that's now J.P. Morgan Chase, had uh, thousands and thousands of jo great jobs right here in Central Ohio. And I'm proud of every day I spent there. Um, and frankly, uh, we need somebody in Congress right now that understands how our financial system works, 